All right, thank you. Great to see you here. I'm excited. I don't know about the rest of you, but um, at any rate, it's, it's, it's fun to be here and, and great to see so much good going on here. This is, it's a, right. You may be able to see from the back, I have this little thing here. This is a, a, my cell phone, my smartphone, my phone. Mine is turned off, so it shouldn't annoy anybody here. But I want you to think for a moment about what this is. Really, what is this? It's a little bit of sand, about that much, for the silicon and the glass. It's a little bit of oil for the plastic. And it's a little bit of the right rocks for the copper and the gold and the rare earth elements. And that's all it is. Sand, oil, and rocks. Now I want you to think for a moment. Suppose we actually gathered up the sand, the oil, and the rocks, and we gave them to various groups. Uh, the US Senate, uh, the Bridge Club. And we said, please turn these into a cellular telephone that has access to more information than existed in the world when I was your age. What would happen? And yet, here it is, and it works. Because, you know, Einstein is in here. Without relativity, this thing would dump you in the Atlantic Ocean in a few days on the GPS. And, and Feynman and Bohr and Heisenberg are in here to make the computer. And design is in here, and business and marketing people who cared very deeply about what they were doing, but people who had skills and knowledge to do it. All right, now I work on climate, and the history of climate, and there's this fascinating story. During the Ice Age, things were crazy, and 10,000 years ago, the world settled down a little bit. And the moment it did, all around the world, people settled down and they started growing food. They did agriculture. They had been hunter-gatherers and they became farmers. And that was a big deal. Rather than just going with the flow, now you spend the summer digging in the ground with a stick. And there's this fascinating discussion. Why would our ancestors quit being hunter-gatherers and become farmers? And the answer is probably because the world was overpopulated. We were killing off things we liked to eat. When there was a drought in your valley, your kids and your grandparents died. And the population of the world, when we settled down to grow things, was probably a few million. And there are now a few billion of us. Without learning and teaching, growing and building and sharing, of the next thousand people you meet, maybe one survives. Of all the people in this room, probably none. Learning and teaching, growing and building and sharing are not optional. They are absolutely essential. They are what gives us the ability to meet here and try to do great things. And part of that has been learning to get along with each other. If you are a hunter-gatherer and you wander off into the distance, you don't have to live with the next tribe all the time. But we do. And part of that has been learning how to clean up after ourselves, for goodness sakes. This is a subject we hate talking about. But be honest. If you were a hunter-gatherer and you take a dump behind a tree, when you come back in a year, the diseases in that are dead. And if you were a farmer and you do it at the end of the row, you or your kids or your parents or your neighbors are going to be drinking it. And you better hope that you get some public hygiene and some civil engineers really, really quick. Okay. Our knowledge lets us be here. Our knowledge lets us get along with each other, but we have to. We must. We must care where we're going, and we must know how to do it, and we must get along. Right? Now, my interest these days <coughs> is energy. 
We are farmers for food, so we can have a thousand times more people on the planet getting along with each other than we used to. We are still hunter-gatherers for energy, and we haven't quite figured out the cleaning up after ourselves on that. We are burning fossil fuels a million times faster than nature saved them for us. It is not a question of, when we ha of if we have to switch, it is a question of when. All right. But you are now the first generation in history that knows that we can build a sustainable energy system that will power everyone on the planet forever, economically, environmentally, and ethically. That we actually can give everyone on the planet what we are enjoying here. And we can do it in a way that makes the bottom line good as well as honoring the golden rule. And it is farming energy the way we farm food. And it is getting along with each other. And it is a beautiful vision. We can screw this up, but we can build something that is so good and so forward-looking that over your, by the time you're gray like me, we can live in a different world that will power everyone essentially forever. The options, if we get along with each other and we learn and we teach and we build and we grow and we share, have never been brighter. But there's one thing you gotta carry with you as you do that, and that is back to this thing, right? Your grandmother's grandmother was probably a farmer. Most of that generation was. And your grandmother's grandmother probably was trying to raise the kids and put food on the table. And she may have been the third best dulcimer player in the west end of the valley. And she probably felt pretty good about herself because she was feeding the kids. And if you bring to your efforts the same commitment, the same belief that your grandmother's grandmother and your grandfather's grandfather brought, you can do so much more than they could because you have these tools and you have this ability. But if you don't watch yourself, you will feel so much worse about yourself because this thing lets you compare yourself to everyone on the planet. And being the third best dulcimer player in the west end of the valley just doesn't make it when you're looking at everybody on Facebook. And you can see how big the problems are and the problems that you're not solving and how big they are. Your ability to help people has gone up fantastically. Your ability to feel bad about it has gone up faster. And so we are Penn State. We are essential to the learning, the teaching, the growing, the building that make us do well. And you will find yourself in that. And if you bring that commitment, you bring that purpose that your grandmother's grandmother and your grandfather's grandfather brought, the future is very bright. We clean up after ourselves, we get along, and we look to building something very better. But make sure you use this not to drag yourself down, but to lift yourself up. You will find the I am and we are. You will do great things, and that is the state of the state.